Today I fucked up helping my sister. My sister recently asked me to go with her to collect her possessions at her ex-boyfriend's apartment. The two of them broke up not so long ago. It was not their first breakup, but my sister assured me it was their final breakup. I asked her if she expected him to be dangerous because I would of course do my best to protect her, but if we were being realistic, her ex was built like Brock Lesnar whereas I looked as physically intimidating as Pete Davidson. My sister said my primary objective was to help her with her belongings, not to be her protector. In others words, my job was to basically be her bitch, not her bodyguard. As soon as we arrived at the ex-boyfriend's apartment, he invited us in and gave my sister all the space she needed to grab her things and go. My sister instructed me to wait in the living room while she went to the bedroom to get whatever was hers. My sister's ex-boyfriend reminded her that some of her personal items were stored in places that she was not tall enough to reach. My sister said she would call me if she was struggling. And she eventually did. But the ex-boyfriend stopped me and said it was his bedroom, so it made more sense for him to go. I said my sister called my name though. The ex-boyfriend lowered his voice for maximum discretion and asked me if I really wanted to help my sister retrieve her box of sex toys because apparently that was most likely what my sister was struggling to get her hands on according to him. I had no desire to be anywhere near my sister's sex toys, so I stepped back and watched from a distance as the ex-boyfriend entered the bedroom and closed the door behind him. I heard the two of them argue, which I low-key expected, but what I heard next was so much more disturbing. I'm not gonna share all the details because it's my sister, but based on what I heard shortly after the argument, it became clear to me that even though my sister broke up with her boyfriend, her vagina did not break up with his penis. I think it was safe to assume that my sister and her ex got so caught up in the heat of the moment that they might have forgotten I was still in the apartment because the two of them were not subtle about fucking the hate out of each other. I was like fuck that, as in, you know, I'm out. So I left with a sufficient amount of trauma. My sister called me like an hour later and expected me to explain why I was gone. I said I didn't sign up to listen to her hook up with her ex like she was auditioning for Japanese porn. My sister attempted to gaslight me by pretending that I didn't hear what I heard and then she tried to make me feel guilty for leaving her stranded with the last person she wanted to be around. Supposedly. Like. The fuck. TLR my sister asked me to go with her to her ex-boyfriend's apartment so that she had someone to help her collect her belongings. Little did I know that my sister and her ex-boyfriend would unexpectedly end up fucking in the bedroom while I was waiting like an idiot in the living room. Now I will forever know what my sister sounds like during sex. They're both toxic, it seems. You're a good sibling, but your sibling is not. Also, I'm sorry but this line sent me. It became clear to me that even though my sister broke up with her boyfriend, her vagina did not break up with his penis. You left her banging. Her fault. Then they all got the clap. My sister attempted to gaslight me by pretending that I didn't hear what I heard and then she tried to make me feel guilty for leaving her stranded with the last person she wanted to be around. Supposedly. Oh. Your sister is so ashamed of what she did that she doesn't even want to admit and she's throwing you under the bus on top of that. That's awful. And a sign that she won't break up with him anytime soon. I hope this isn't true but, the way the whole thing went down. You're here to carry stuff but don't come in while I get the stuff. X apparently knew she was coming but didn't get her stuff out for her, then waited until she had trouble, then shut the door. I get the feeling this was all planned and maybe they somehow get their rocks off being watched or at least listened to. What she's really upset about is that Op didn't hang around to hear the whole thing. Today I fucked up by watch the Mori show with my dad. This was a week ago but the results are being felt now. I had the day off and my father was working from home. I was watching the Mori show when my father had came into my room to drop off folded clothes. He asked to watch with me so we moved to the living room to finish the episode. They were talking about how both parents and two children had big ears. The test proved that the man was not the father. My father looked at my ears and noticed that mine were detached while his are attached. We probably watched the show for three hours. I later noticed that everyone else in my family has attached ears besides me. My father started looking at me more and acting distant. And almost completely ignoring my mother, if not just to argue. Some context. I am the middle child, and have darker and straighter hair than my family. So in family pics I do stand out a bit. 
Not like a black sheep but a gray sheep. He broke down yesterday and asked to take a DNA ancestry test. He had only bought two just for the both us. He has never cried in front of me so I took the test right away. He begged me not to tell my mother and that regardless of the results he will love me. My parents were off and on until my birth. I also know I was a surprise baby and I am what brought my parents back together. Again the most shocking thing is that my father never cries or is even emotional. To see him crying, sad, and actually scared has literally broke me. Too long did not read. My father is unsure if I am his actual child. Dad must have had doubts the whole time. Don't let the results change your family. If dad isn't your bio dad, he is still the man who raised you. You should have posted this after you got the results. You don't see Mori airing an episode without the test results? Whatever happens, remember that blood relation does not make a man your dad. What makes a man a dad is how they choose to act. And your dad raised you your whole life. You don't need a DNA test to tell you that he's your dad. A guy I've known since 1965 found out only 2-3 years ago that the man who raised him wasn't his biological father. This happened after his dad passed based on a 23andMe type test he did. His perspective was amazing. It didn't change the wonderful relationship he had with his father, though I know it did open up some sentiments that were confusing. See you in 3-5 weeks op, and the 1 month post update after that. The idea that attached versus unattached earlobes is genetic, in the sense that it is a single gene that controls it and not a complex interplay of a bunch of different things, is a myth. The genetics of earlobe shape are complex and can't be boiled down to something that's simple. I'm sorry you two are having these issues, but legitimately you've both gotten worked up over an urban legend.